This is Huawei Triple Eight coming back to you today to piece together the shambles of a life our crazy Jackie has had to endure. We've all seen the notorious takedown of crazy Auntie Jackie while she was lounging like a bored ingenue in her private pool in Beverly Hills. Yes, crazy Auntie Jackie was in a world made just for her. But we've had a chance to have a window into her life as she's given us permission to. Now, I, Wild Away, have taken the time to pull together, if you will, the culprits who have absconded secretly away with our Auntie Jackie to lose Derek prison. We're told that this particular prison that our auntie has been taken to is a maximum security facility. Where to begin? Well, I've taken the opportunity to quarterback this. And if you'll see here on this handmade bulletin board, all of the individuals that I believe had a expert hand in the takedown. First up and runner up, we know, Legina Angela Wusu, Love Halton Gold, the secret love child of Alia and Robert R. Kelly, is the number one front runner. Oh, we know you had something to do with this, Angela. And we don't fault you, baby girl. I mean, after all, she does owe you somewhere up to maybe about two or three stacks. All of the things that you did in her honor, especially having to endure those late night sit-ins at the darkened river across the street from Erica Badu's house, listening for hours and hours and hours to your sensei's detractors. Yes, good people, that alone propelled our Angela to turn Crazy Jackie in. And then there was Genesis, who put her house address up for Bond stating that when our great auntie gets out of prison, this is the location that the FBI, CIA, ATF, any and every local police station in the United States can find Jacqueline, Suzette, Jaguar Wright, sometimes Johnson, this is where she can be located. Now, you say to yourself, why in the world would they do such a thing? Everybody knew that Crazy Jackie was not going to follow through with any obligation, much less drop an album. Anyway, Shana Shania, a lonely, bored housewife who only used to come onto her favorite content creator's pages to laugh at that silly Jackie. Well, one day, Shanae Shania got it in her mind that she was going to leave her nest of the comments section where she was comfy and cozy. 
Oh, yes. Shana Shania says she's going to get on that live panel this time and give Jackie a good old Christian piece of her mind. Well, little did Shana Shania know. Crazy Auntie Jackie didn't get her nickname from nowhere. Shana Shania was quickly packed up and shipped off to the North Pole by our auntie. See, Shania Shania's linguistics wasn't top tier enough to match with our Auntie Jackie's wordplay. Shana Shania became incensed when she looked in the comment section where she had just recently resided. To her dismay, everyone in the comment section was laughing at her. Not to be undeterred, Shana Shania stepped it up a notch. Whenever she heard Auntie Jackie was on one of her content creators' pages, she ran, she ran, she ran over there. As she had been working on her snapbacks in the mirror. Hmm? She's a little older, so she had to enlist her grandchildren to help her with these comebacks. And this one particular time, she thought she had her script down pat and she got shredded once again by our crazy auntie. Shana Shania thought she would go up there on the live panel and shake the table. The only thing shaken was her soul. Not only did our crazy auntie Jackie threaten to unalive her, Shana Shania, she threatened to also unalive her children and their offspring. Shana Shania decided that this was the last straw, being dragged on her favorite social media was too much for her. She reached out, as she says, to the DeSoto police. Shayna Shania also states that someone, possibly one of Crazy Jackie's beehive fans, broke the HIPAA law and found out where she lived, worked, resided, ate, slept, and where she went to get her illnesses taken care of. Now that means that someone in the hospital who listens to this saga, a nurse or an orderly, or just someone who wheels the cart around and hands out the mail, they broke into her personal information and released it to these YouTube streets. Shana Shania says that she has enlisted a lawyer. Yet, whenever she gets a chance, she's all over these YouTube streets running her mouth like she does not have representation. And last but not least, Goomba and Dirty Nikki. We all know why Goomba has an extra grind, and we all know that Dirty Nikki is his fake starlet. Sometimes walk on, exit the wrong stage, stand at the wrong mark. Starlet. She, too, has tried to usurp our Auntie Jackie's fame by saying that she was doing the Lord's work by saving Goomba from unalivement from our crazy auntie. She just couldn't get her script right. She could not emote the emotions that each scene required of her. Her script had more holes than we've ever seen in a made-for-TV YouTube production. Now, after doing my consensus, I've determined that Goomba and Nikki need to be replaced for season two. Uh, 
Gomba, whose linguistics are next to none, more so akin to animalistic grunts of mm -hmm, fat meat greasy, mama. See, he just could not hold the intricacies of a complicated script. And Dirty Nikki, who like minds attract, like minds, you know, water meets its own level. Dirty Nikki. If we know anything else about her, is that she has a problem with the English language, particularly writing it. Hence why her Facebook posts are a shambles. Because no one can figure out what the hell Dirty Nikki is talking about under any of her pictures posts. Shameful. I suggest that Goomba be replaced by Ving Rhames because this script needs a strong male lead. And Goomba's bitch made ass is not it. We all know that Goomba was going to leave her regardless. So although him leaving was a part of the script, the follow-up around the character that he left Crazy Jackie for left us wanting. Okay. Now, we cannot forget the tentacles that Goomba has in this character play. Now, remember, it's Dirty Nicky that's also riding his dick. But his mama, Mama Charlotte, Mama Charlotte and Papa Johnson are incensed with their son, Goomba Gerald Lahaskins Johnson. They've told him to get rid of that crazy woman years before. And here she is, dragging down their good Kojic Baptist name by saying that they're gun runners. Gun runners and skin sellers. Oh yes, our crazy auntie has accused Mama Charlotte and Papa Johnson of being in the skin game, using these poor disadvantaged young women as drug mules all up and down the South. Oh yeah. So even though Goomba's character is very weak, um, I, I, I wanted to say that they were supporting characters, him and Dirty Nikki, but their storyline is all over the place. But we do know that Goomba has some skin in the game. Okay, so I've listed four major characters, four ops, and of course, Legina will not be undone, okay? She says that she didn't know that it was going to turn out this way. But we all know that Angela's, Legina's, uh, Love Gold Halton is, is a liar. Okay. Her grand opening, grand closing, uh, worldwide premiere with a certain content creator that played her for filth on his show only made her look crazier than what we could ever imagine that she ever was. Now, the best actress award, I would have to say, would go to Angela Wawusu. Angela says, upon being further questioned on this particular content creator's page, that she knew she was Aliyah's daughter when her foster sister told her that she had passed away. And that very night, she cried in her pillow and dreamt of Aaliyah at the dinner table with her. She dreamt of Aaliyah during a Christmas party 
uh, that she was present with, where Leah actually gave her a present. But alas, when she awoke, Leah wasn't there. And she was heartbroken, showing her pain and loss in that very moment on that panel. It was quite riveting, especially when this same foster sister told her that she beat up Alia. Well, Angela was beside herself, recanting the story to said content creator. She started rolling her neck like a boxer. And the content creator, picking up on Angela's discomfort, asked her pointedly, Legina, what would you do if you found out that your foster sister did indeed beat up your mother? r and legend, not Leah Holt. Angela responded with a snarl. I fuck her up for the future. I was flabbergasted. It was then that everyone watching this particular content creator's podcast realized that Angela is batshit crazy. And not only is Angela crazy, she's impressionable, fractured in her personality. So much so that you can place any thought pattern in Angela's mind and she will believe it. They picked her brain for hours and hours and hours. And along the way, I somehow was able to decipher her mush-mouthed dialect enough to know that she's crazy. She's not stupid. When she recounted the part of her sensei believing that she indeed was going to be the one to pack up the apartment along with her son, Sam. That the two of them were going to be doing all the heavy lifting while Angela said, no, darling, I will not lift up that fucking refrigerator and place it gently on the sidewalk while you sit in your truck ranting about your pocketbook. And while you're uh, her mother, 78 years old, sits out in the hot sun without a fan or a sun hat or anything. Oh, no. Angela said she did the right thing. Because, see, crazy Jackie got her fucked up. Back to Shania. Shania says she updated her pow pow permit, and at no point, at any time, should Jacqueline, Suzette, Jaguar, right? Sometimes Johnson think that she would ever step foot over into her residency. Okay? Crazy Jackie, nor her crazy beehive, should ever think that they could ever, ever. Never, ever, 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 ever get on her motherfucking level. Do you know why? Do you know why, Crazy Jackie? Because she said it's on sight, bitch. It's on sight. Now, fuck with it. Fuck with it. Nevertheless, she called the police. All right, so we know that she Is one of the main snitches. Oh, and then we have other small supporting cast of characters, such as this woman named Nicole. Jackie, do you know some girl named Nicole? She claims to have been a family friend and known you since 2015. And she's been through six or seven evictions with you prior. And uh, mention how she's such a good friend to you and the family that she dropped by Uh, the sidewalk where all of your objects were placed and handed your mother a bottle of water. 
You asked Crazy Jackie if she needed any help. And you jumped into your vehicle and you spat the fuck off. Because, see, that's how good of a friend you are. And pretty soon, pretty quickly, commenters as well as content creators started to see the lack of interest in your sincerity. Mm -hmm. You tried to come on this particular content creator to track down your uh, so-called friend of the family. You know, the one that who she was shouting out as she was being snatched from the purified waters of Lake Minnetonka by her goddess braids. That particular content creator, did you do your research, darling, before you jumped on his panel? It's mighty odd that after running your mouth for 15 hours straight, going on a motherfucking weekly marathon, now you realize that this particular content creator has a past and you no longer feel comfortable spilling the beans on all crazy jackie's family history and secrets you've decided to come on the panel to state to said content creator that he must back off you promptly were dropped from the panel and clowned and ridiculed for hours and hours and hours. Interesting. I'm wondering how much of a hand you had in our dear aunties. Situation. I'm, I, I'm wondering, what was your role? Because you were way too calm when they told you that we have video evidence of your so-called family friend being locked up. Here's the evidence. Let's watch. And all you could say was, oh, good. Now we can go get mom and Sam. See, that was not the emotion that the scene required. And because you didn't give that emotion, it left you suspect, okay, in my mind. Hmm. I said there's something to her lack of emotion about this. There's a 78-year-old woman sitting in the lobby a thousand miles away by herself with possible dementia who hasn't taken her insulin. And there is a possibly autistic young man with her who's wandering aimlessly about crying in his sleeve about his mommy. Then two of these individuals can exist on their own. Yet you, Nicole, drives off into the sunset laughing maniacally. That's what that damn Jackie get. <laughs> I can see you now. Girl, you ain't nobody's friend. And then there is the crazy Jackie bloodline. Oh, yes, we got a chance to talk to uh, a crazy auntie Jackie's sister. Oh, yes, she had on her best. I'm talking to the IRS customer service voice that you could ever imagine. She had on her, I'm talking to the white people about my check voice. But somewhere in between her pauses, we heard a loud, maniacal, crazy sounding younger Jackie. It was her daughter, crazy auntie's niece. I instantly labeled her baby crazy. Now, see, this is what this script needed. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that there's two other cast of characters, or maybe four or five. Let me just rattle them all. Content creator one and content creator two, who shall not be named. But if you've been following this drama, we know who they are. Now. 
it's been said, allegedly, that they are the two content creators who funded this script. Because let's be clear, Auntie Jackie, you're not worth $45 million. Your car keeps declining in the drive through at McDonald's. So let's cut the shit. They funded you and Goomba's travels, nomad style, all up and down the South, recording this reality show. When pushed against the wall, said content creators came out fighting. They got people. They had people's pages shut down. Because those other content creators were pushing into their algorithm. As far as they were concerned, they created crazy Auntie Jackie and no one else. Now, what I would like to know from these content creators is why, oh, why couldn't you have stepped in and started assisting our dear Auntie with her script? Because from what Legina has said, that Auntie was starring, producing, writing, in editing said script now we know that you put certain ideas into her head because only those few things that she came up with that were extra cunty could have come from individuals like you yeah she was on her cunt role and we all know (laughs) how y'all like to get down in the cunt department Hmm? her snaps were epic I know for a fact that she had to get some lingo from the both of you. Okay. So this one particular content creator has now decided that he is going to make the family content. Because see, without Crazy Jackie, he has nothing to talk about. Even though he has millions of followers and claims that they'll flock to him no matter if he's talking about the sky is blue, they'll be there. And he can talk about the sky and his shoelaces for hours and hours and hours. And then one of his subscribers will get bored and leave. Because he is popping toes. Quote unquote, allegedly. Now, the other content creator has disappeared slightly into the background, slowly backing away from this drama because, see, it wasn't giving what he thought it would give. Although our crazy auntie is the star and the leading lady of this show, it just. The script got out of control. That's when the two of you content creators were supposed to rein her back in. But you realized you released Godzilla. You released the Kraken. And it was nowhere else for the script to go. Now, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, I'm just throwing in a, a eight ball here. What if the two of you were responsible as well? in this spider web of a takedown. Because now we could also draw from the different organizations that she disparaged. Uh, The Black Panthers. Mm -hmm. They initially were going to help Crazy Jaguar to delete Goomba and Nikki and S.A. Nikki, her children, and her son. And she was going to stand by and watch gleefully because that's what that damn Goomba get. Okay. And then we have the cartel. Now, remember, Officer Ramirez, who George floated her earlier in the year, is working hand-in-hand with the Sinanola cartel. Now, the one thing I have to say to that, Jackie, is you watch too much motherfucking power, okay? Because that's the same name of the cartel on that show. So I know where you got that piece of the script from, okay? This is what I'm saying. Holes in your script. Holes in your script. Okay, so she summoned the mythological cartel from Texas. And you know they somewhere listening. Laughing, yet listening. Pissed off even 
Like, who the fuck does this bitch think she is adding this to her script and she hasn't talked about remuneration? Hmm? How are we supposed to get paid for our roles in said cartel with uh, Officer Ramirez, who works for the DeSoto police, who also answers to Bobby from the barbershop where all of these drugs are being funneled through from guess who? That damn Charlotte and her cogent pastor of a husband, Papa Johnson. So it was Papa Johnson, Ramirez, the cartel, and Bobby. They running guns, drugs, and pussy all through the South. Okay. So then we also have... And she just threw this in here for 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 uh, spice, I think, because what in the hell do the Hebrew Israelites got to do with this? I had to chuckle. Then Jackie, my goodness, the most angry sect of Judaism. Of course you would. So. If we were to add up all these key players who could have all had a hand in bringing down our dear Jackie, we would have to title this season, The Enemy of My Enemy is My Friend. Because, see, understand, none of these people got to like each other. Not even Goomba and Nikki. They don't like each other. They have a common bond. And that's to bring down that unhinged Jacqueline. Jaguar. Suzette. Right. And soon to be. X Johnson. Stay tuned for the ending of this. Dazzling. Dazzling saga. This season finale, if I had to give it a Roger and Ebert tomato test, out of five, I would give it three tomatoes. You know, I I kept the two stars in there just for that award-winning ending. Showing our beloved auntie laid out in her private pool. Her goddess braids, blonde and burgundy, splayed out behind her while she floats and dry bags for cash apps for her quote-unquote mods on her live begging, begging, just begging someone to ask her questions for $10. And no one, absolutely no one in her life dared ask Auntie Jackie a question for fear of being told off by that linguistically advanced Jaguar right. Girl, that season finale was it was epic and that's how I knew that those two favorite content creators of yours assisted you in that dramatic takedown I can hear them now whoo 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 now that's Jackie whoo 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 now what you need to do girl you already know they coming for you yes hair flip hair flip Hair flip. Now, what you need to do is go put on your sexiest bathing suit. Yes, girl. And lay out on the dais and talk shit for the last time to your lives. Girl, girl, the numbers, the numbers. Can you imagine the numbers? And all our crazy auntie ever wanted to do was go viral. Before I end this. There's one entity 
back still bothers me. Crazy auntie, what were you doing at that white people bike shop? You know the one you call monkey bars? Something like that? What the fact that you were talking to them in code about picking up a package? Oh my. And how when they just so happen to take a picture of a random car sitting outside their business and showed you and said that the people inside came in and asked for you and said they were private investigators? It was just the way they said it, like, they weren't shocked. They weren't, as a matter of fact, the only emotion I can get from them is that they were amused. Why were they amused at the police coming to their bike shop to ask for you? And then that tweaky conversation that you had with them that didn't fit into the script and made absolutely no fucking sense because we all know that Sam Jr. can much less drive a car. Much less a fucking bike. You're trying to tell us that they they upgrade cars and bikes and they're giving Sam Jr. a present he'll never forget for his birthday. But Sam Jr. doesn't even own a driver's license, much less a state ID. Honey, these entities at the monkey bar, I don't trust them. I don't trust them. That sleeping with the gators comedy relief conversation was quite telling. See, Auntie, I know you were at your last end of your wits because the truth of the matter is you didn't even have a storage you had absconded away with the U-Haul truck. You had it for more than two days. Not only were U-Haul calling the police to look for their property, but you are hiding the truck behind the hotel, which lets me know you plan to um, make a getaway in that truck. Because that truck that you're actually driving The payment was to be somewhere within this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's 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 quarterback this. I got the bulletin board right here. I got all the cast of characters right up there. Look at it. Look at it. Jackie's life was falling down around her. She had one day left at the extended hotel motel Holiday Inn. And she had only garnered ten dollars on her dry bag live. That wasn't even enough for a pack of cigarettes. Not them Newport Long she be smoking. Oh no. Jackie said to herself, I don't know what to do. I think I'm just about to do something unthinkable. And, you know, low-key as it's kept, if the police wasn't going to snatch you up, the streets were. The streets was going to snatch you up, Jackie. And I think you knew that. I think, in a way, a part of this script, it was... The plan for you to go to jail. Because, see, you had no other way out. You had no money, no resources, and nowhere to go. So why not go out with a bang, you thought? But I think you wanted a different sort of bang to send you to the penitentiary. 
and God wouldn't allow it. It might just be your mother and your son that saved your life. Okay? Those warrants and extraditions are the least of your problems. Because even while you're in jail, Jackie, they still want your head, girl. They want your head. This script is a shambles, though, darling. Season one was chaotic, schizophrenic, and all over the place. If these YouTube streets pick you back up for season two when you get out of jail, if you get bond, um, we want to know, are you going to tweak the script a little bit? Because it needs some major tweaking and not from you. It just needs major tweaks. If it's going to be picked up for a second season, just my thoughts. Thank you for listening to the audio chronicles of Who is Jaguar Wright? Once again, the season finale's header was The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Have a good night, Jackie.